When they talk, they talk to the street. Welcome to our program series on disability and inclusion. On today's edition of the program, we will focus on the activities of the Northwest Development Authority, Medino. Medino has as mandate to supervise development policies and projects in the Northwest region aimed at promoting the socio-economic empowerment and improving the living conditions of people within the region. And talking about improving the living conditions of people in the region, persons with disabilities are included because they are an integral part of the community. To understand Medina's work on fostering inclusive development in the Northwest region, Cletus Anyamatoya, the general manager of Medino, talks to the district. Mr. General Manager, you're welcome to today's edition of the program. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. We just want you to first of all suggest to us Medino's work within the Northwest region. Medino is um, a development authority created by the government in 1981. And um, we've done so much for more than 40 years for the Northwest region. Uh, being a development agency, a development authority for the region, Medina has as part of its uh, regalian activities to carry out studies, development, uh, studies on development projects, and um, we we'll create projects which are sponsored by by uh, our partners, foreign partners like the ATB, the Islamic Development Bank. We equally run on our yearly programs on the, the public investment budget that government provides to us. Uh, when we create the projects and they are funded by foreign partners, we do the supervision and make sure the projects are fairly distributed all over the region, and they have done so much. We have done so much in um, accelerating the development of the region. Now, within the context of your work, you've partnered with the CBC Health Services at making sure that persons with disabilities are included in your work. Can you just suggest with us how the partnership is unfolding? I think um, I got so, um, so moved when I attended the workshop in 2021, I personally was there with one of my collaborators. I learned so much. Uh, I got to discover that uh, you can't talk development without uh, taking everybody on board. I mean, talking development without including people with um, the, the physical impact, the people with disabilities, is not complete development. So after that workshop, uh, when I got back to the to Medina, I immediately had to summon, had a meeting with my staff, and uh, I expressed the importance of that workshop. Then I gave instructions, most particularly to my technical department, to make sure that uh, uh, projects that were conceived for the region should equally consider people with disabilities. I equally talk with the financial, the, the, the financial department to make sure once those concessions are met, uh, there should be provisions for all of that. So I think uh, the partnership uh, is yielding a lot of fruits. We went ahead, we we're talking in 2022, after having attended the workshop in 2021, and I gave instructions to my collaborators who immediately took uh, my instructions for, for implementation. So in our 2022 budget, we made uh, available uh, some, some, some kick-off means which will accompany the people with disabilities to empower them 
socially, economically, and all of that. So we, I think in the face of assessing the needs of these people with disabilities, we are work with the, with the receipt. And um, I am very optimistic that by the end of the year, end of the day, the people with disabilities will certainly be feeling part of our activities. And subsequently, in the years to come, we will continue to make sure we work with, continue to work with seat and um, give the opportunity for to those with disabilities to make contribute their own quarter in the development of the region. Now, if one was to place a finger on strategies that actually include persons with disabilities in every of Midinos project, can you just highlight for us some of those strategies? Um, you know, um, we carry out activities. I have not totally enumerated all of what we do, but I think uh, even when uh, we're launching the farming season and we are distributing farming seed, farm seeds or farm inputs to farmers, I give instructions to my collaborators to make sure there's their provision or some quarter for those people with disabilities. And believe you me, uh, for the launching of 2022 farming season, they were there and their numbers are really very satisfied. And um, I'm very convinced that uh, uh, they will certainly make use of the family inputs that we put at their disposal. We equally um, then uh, went ahead to see if subsequently uh, any, um, any uh, constructions that have to take place we have to make sure that uh, uh, we take we consider those people with disabilities and make the designs in such a way that they should be inclusive. Uh, we can't have any other building from now on without the, without the ramps um, and any other facilities which are needed by people with disabilities. We have to make sure we continue to work with it and. Uh, uh, make sure that all of this uh, give the opportunity for the people with disabilities to equally uh, feel psychologically that they are humans and uh, they are equally considered in our development endeavors. And um, I want to be very, very optimistic by saying that uh, after the training that we got in CBC, uh, I went straight away, gave the instructions, and I think for this year, 2022, there's a provision of 25 million, which might not be really, uh, uh, very uh, sufficient, but that's a kickoff. So we used, we work alongside with SEED to make sure they assess uh, all of what is needed by the people with disabilities so we start accompanying them with the mega means that we have and subsequently we'll improve on that. Okay. Now, if you were to talk in terms of impact, what is the impact of this partnership towards fostering the inclusion of persons with disabilities in your projects, even in your institution, and even on the persons with disability back in the community who are the beneficiaries? Uh, I think, uh, believe you me or not, uh, uh, before I attend the workshop, I want to be very honest with you that uh, uh, little attention has been paid to that. But I think subsequently, and uh, we will equally went ahead to talk to our project coordinators to make sure that uh, when we are executing the projects, we take consideration of the fact that a good uh, quarter of the population are people with uh, with disabilities. Uh, even the new projects that we are designing, like in the Fidel Phase 2, the Fidel Phase 1 is running up in it was run, it was run up in March, which has been extended to September. Uh, in our design, we are making sure that we make provision for those with disabilities. And um, most of the projects we will carry for 40 years. Uh, uh, purely, uh, we concentrate our first uh, efforts in growing out the agricultural production, but this time around the 
The other conception which we came up with, which is going to be very exciting, is to get to add value to the agricultural produce. And there's a new project which we are still working on lobbying performance. We call it Agroground to Abrivate. That's a project that is meant to get to processing and adding value to agricultural products. And in that project, we have we know that uh, we have to take uh, give a very high consideration to people with disabilities. And there's another project too on uh, mitigating climate change. So all of that, I think. All of this were highly, I was personally highly motivated by the workshop I attended in CBC and I won an pledge during that workshop. And one year after, we are ready into making sure that all of what we, 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 we learned there, we try to give our brothers and sisters or our children who, uh, not by their own design, find themselves in that category of the population to have access. To, to the facilities that we are trying to create for the for the population. And Mr. GM, Kato mm. Senyo Matoya, mm. thank you for your time. And would there be any vote to say that persons with disabilities are in your project? Would that be a yes? Uh, I think, you see, uh, uh, being uh, the head of a development authority, uh, you can't talk development without it being inclusive. Inclusive development is what closes the gap. Because if the gaps are not close, then you are heading to an explosion someday. Because uh, we are mitigating or trying to close the gaps between the very rich and the very poor and those who, we, who don't have the people with disabilities we want to close the gaps as much as possible and make sure that the trickle down effects on the population uh, yields the satisfaction or promotes the gross national happiness for everybody. Once you do that, then you would have been building a, a society where people are comfortable, where people are happy where every other person feel like belonging to the community or to the society and people that alone will accelerate the productivity will accelerate the output the gdp the gross domestic product and eventually the national income of the economy so i think it's very important this particular and i think what we're doing uh, it will be incumbent on us to make sure that uh, we took the appetite of the government to make sure that in national policies, people with disabilities are taken on board. When everyone is included, that's inclusion and that's the streak. Thank you for being part of today's edition of the program. Until then, when we streak yet another institution, individual or organization, it's been Akim Olives and Kwan. Same thank you and good day.